देर इज अ फेमस गजल अब की सावन घराजा मीनिंग कम होम दिस मानसून फॉर सम ऑफ यू इट माइट बी वन ऑफ द फेवरेट सॉन्ग्स बिकॉज इट होल्ड्स सो मच मोर इट होल्ड्स पोइट्री प्लेजर लॉन्जिंग लव एंड इट इज संग इन द ब्यूटिफुल वॉइस ऑफ बेगम अख्तर खान हु इज फेमसली नोन एज मल्लिका गजल वेलकम टू आर शो ओल्ड टू पास्ट वेर वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स फ्रॉम द पास्ट about people who negotiated with the world and chose to love about events that might have been forgotten in history about books or anecdotes that requires a part in history our first episode is on the famous begum akhtar khan akhtari bai fezabadi eventually came to be known as begum akhtar was born in fezabad on 7th october 1914 to mushtari bai and a lawyer father Mushtari Bai was a gaane wali who was known as the wife and she brought up Akhtari on her own after her father had left them. She was exceptionally talented from a young age and her mother sent her for training under various ustads. The word the wife had accumulated a lot of meaning over time. They were gaane walis who were musicians who performed wrote poetry property owners who were one of the few women who paid income tax. They were a significant part of the urban life of 19th century. They were not just courtesans who were at the mercy of patrons, they also exercised their own agency. Over time there were certain moral ideas through which their identity was constructed and in the popular mindset they were often equated with a sex worker which became more rigid with the Victorian morality of the British. And Begum created a name for herself during that period. Her first recording was by the Megaphone Recording Company in 1933. She also used to do acting, but she preferred singing. Selim Kidwai, a poet and author, historian, activist, the first person who has written a lot about her life. He and the famous Kashmiri poet Aga Shahid Ali were really close to Khan. and their memoirs their poems reflect a lot about Begum Khan Kidwai says that her natural milieu was the Mujram Mahfil more respectfully known as a Baithak there she interacted with her guests punctuated her singing with smiles witty rejoinders and coquettishly accepted compliments from her delighted company he says a kotha was set up at Hazrat Ganj which was a posh commercial hub of Lucknow at that time and it was called the Akhtar Manzil and according to kidwai her mother had positioned her daughter in lucknow's exclusive neighborhood to become an important part of the social and cultural life of the city the male aristocracy of awadh the nawabs used to visit her mahfil she was successful famous and reported to be wealthy by the late 1930s and these men who used to visit her they were large estate holders lawyers doctors rich businessmen judiciary and they all dropped in and they left presents in hope for future invitations many invited her to private family celebrations and her approval was seen as a symbol of pride and she was treated with a lot of respect she had always been aware of the non respectability which was associated with her profession and she had des- decided to negotiate a respectable position by for herself by choosing to marry in an aristocratic sunni family she married ishtiaq ahmed abbasi an english educated lawyer who was practicing in lucknow at a secret ceremony in 1944 and after getting married she chose not to continue with her singing and decided to get into a married life however kidwai who was writing about her he says that she realized that life is of that life of great respectability came at a great cost and that was of compromised independence so begum decided to leave the marriage and then she began singing again She decided to move out of Abbasi's house eventually. Kidwai says, "The thing was that when you leave a kota and go to a respectable family, obviously you have decided you will not sing as publicly as you did before." And that was a political statement of the time that she was making. In 1952, the zamindari system was abolished, and it affected the landed aristocrats. Akhtari was also severely affected because that meant that she would have to lose her patrons. and then she started thinking of alternative ways where she could start singing 
and i think that's how she started moving to new spaces new spaces of production she got out of that her traditionally formed area of the mehfil and she started going to places and she started giving live performances in 1950s she accepted two shagirds which is a practice of binding her pupils as her protégés which was practiced historically by men and it was the simple act whatever she did she did of her own accord she negotiated with the world and refused the loneliness the world assigned her she often got out of her house to other friends houses to make music to party and to smoke to continue with our story about begum wait for our next episode until then hope you have a great time sipping tea and listening to the voice of begum this monsoon <laughs>